He hates banging on about Brexit. I mean, what more is there to British politics at the moment than Brexit? Nothing else, and there won't be anything else besides Brexit, besides Brexit, even if we were to leave on October 31st, which is now much less likely. I said we because I'm based in the UK. <laughs> is, is this a constitutional crisis, or is this just there's all kinds of weird things that happen in the way the British government works, and it's kind of working how it's supposed to, even if it's sort of pushing the extreme edges of how Parliament typically works. Well, it's extra hard to define a constitutional crisis in a country without a written constitution. Uh, what does that mean? It means that the British constitution has evolved over a period of 700 years uh, with bits and pieces of, of rulings and judgments. Uh, but you might be referring to Duncan Weldon's uh, piece about uh, the fact that we don't have uh, you know, the military out in the streets suggests that um, we're not in a constitutional crisis yet in the UK. But where we certainly are is what I would call a political nervous breakdown. So when we look at what's going on there though, is there going to be real spillover to the EU if that relationship is severed in the way that everyone thinks it's going to be at the end of October? And Brexit has really become a footnote to other European Union member states. It always comes uh, lower down on the list of, of topics to discuss. Um, the EU has been consistent about wanting a, a resolution, but the developments in the last two days, Parliament's only been in session two days in London, uh, really suggest that we are further from a resolution. A political nervous breakdown. Where are you, what are your, the number one question then coming from clients? Is it, is it how much uncertainty is there? How much uncertainty will there remain? What, what to do in this current breakdown? What's so difficult about Brexit is that it's impossible to draw a decision tree about the outcomes. It just looks like <laughs> a bowl of spaghetti. And the other point is that there's kind of an inverse relationship between how much time it takes to explain Brexit <laughs> relative to yeah. the wider economic impact. So to, to your previous point, um, what's the potential for a Brexit effect for, for the rest of the European Union? It's the worst for the UK. It's quite bad for Ireland. Um, it is, you know, we think it's uh, less impactful for the European Union, but one of the most important um, byproducts, I think, of the, of the Brexit kind of, um, uh, you know, spectacle is that leaving the European Union looks extremely unpalatable now yes. to any other country. Real quickly, will the UK be in the EU on November 1st? Yes. Really? Oh, there you go. The big call there. And you think it'll push out, what, just by three months or? It long? will. So the, I think the very short explanation, as clear as I can be, is that Labour will hold out in supporting uh, new elections until it gets what it wants, which is um, for the Prime Minister to go to the European Union and get an extension agreed, which requires all the EU27 to, um, to assent. I think they will. That will push out cliff edge Brexit probably to January. I think at this point we looking to get uh, elections in November. That's not good for Boris Johnson, which is why he wants them earlier. Political capital and approval ratings are pretty much a diminishing asset. For him, the sooner the better. Right. He will go down in history as a prime minister suffering four out of four legislative defeats in the first two days parliament's in session.